I'm Joshua Bardwell, and this is a heck of a little quadcopter I've got in my hands right here. This is the Hoverbot Nano. Uh, the Nano actually is the frame, but you can also buy an FPV-ready kit that includes everything you see right here. Uh, this is a micro brushless quadcopter. Uh, if you're used to flying brushed quadcopters like the Eashin QX90, or yes, dare I even say it, the Tiny Whoop, you owe it to yourself to try a brushless quadcopter. Brushless means that these are teeny tiny little brushless motors and these are teeny tiny little ESCs. Look, you see, see in there? Look, there's the there's the stators and the windings and here's a little ESC. It's a real legit three-phase brushless motor and that means that it has some serious power and serious torque that the brushed copters simply cannot match. You know what else it means? It means you're not going to be replacing your motors every you know, 10, 15, whatever hours of flight because they burned out because brushed motors burn out when you abuse them the way that we do. These are going to be much more durable. Speaking of durable, let me show you a crash reel. Now that was all of the crashes that I got, had in my first, uh, you know, 10 or so packs with the copter, just trying to get the feel for it flying around the house. And I'm happy to say that in all of the flying I've done since then, it is in great shape. Uh, these are the original props. They're a little chipped up if you look closely. And in fact, the frame itself has almost no damage. Uh, this leg right here, the, the little sticky uppy part here broke off in a good crash. Uh, so you can get replacement legs like so, and they just sort of snap right in. Joshua from the future here to tell you that all carbon fiber parts on this frame come with a unlimited lifetime warranty. Uh, seems like the kind of thing I would have mentioned when I recorded the original voiceover, but uh, somehow I overlooked it. So I've come back in time to remind you of that. And that is a big freaking deal because it means if you do manage to break one of these parts, well, they'll just send you some more. So that's nice. I'm super impressed with this frame because uh, one of the challenges of designing a frame uh, in this weight class is you have to save every ounce of weight that you can because as powerful as these motors are, you know, the, the thrust to weight ratio is not fantastic for these copters. Uh, but a lot of times you see people giving up weight and then the copter becomes very fragile and it breaks. And especially if you're flying indoors, you're going to crash a lot. Uh, at least I do. Uh, the indoor environment is much tighter. You're flying to fly through chairs and tables and all kinds of stuff. You crash a lot. I found this copter to be remarkably durable. Another thing that contributes to its durability is that it comes with not a clover leaf, but one of these linear antennas. And they have less range than a clover leaf, but frankly, in an indoor environment with a little microcopter like this, you're probably not going to go far enough that the, the lack of range is going to matter. The other thing I did, mine didn't come this way. I don't know if you're if you build a kit, maybe this would be a good idea for you to follow. But I took this is the, the receiver antenna. And I took a uh, 
a zip tie and I just put it at a right angle here and I heat shrunk the receiver antenna there just to help keep it out of the props. Uh, mine came from the manufacturer who built it for me, thank you very much, uh, with this one just sort of hanging loose. You can also see that they have put some hot glue in here, some hot glue in the heat shrink and that provides just a little rigidity here to hold this antenna up. It's a very clever thing that they've done there. Well, that's all well and good, but how does it fly? Let me show you a little sizzle reel. Well, you can see from that reel, it flies pretty good. In fact, it flies so well that I'm just, I'm never going back to a brushless copter. I this It's so much better. But it's not perfect. I found that on the stock Betaflight PIDs, at least, it was pretty sensitive. Um, I w it was easy to get into an over-control situation where when I would twitch the stick to make a rapid change, for example, I'm about to crash into the wall, so I, you know, I real quick roll to the left, point the butt of the copter at the wall, and jam the throttle to kind of stop crashing. It was really it was easy to then be overcorrected to the left and go to the right and end up in a kind of a pendulum scenario. Uh, I also experienced that when flying line of sight. If I would do a flip or a roll, at the very end of the flip or roll, when I would go to stop it, it was hard to stop it right on the right angle. Normally, you don't stop it right on the exact right angle. You stop it pretty close, and then you do a last-minute correction as you jam the throttle to kind of level the copter out. It was really easy to come out of the flip or roll line of sight at the wrong angle and end up in a kind of a backy-forthy pendulum situation overcorrecting. Uh, I was able to improve this somewhat by playing with the PIDs, uh, and I'll show you my PIDs uh, a little later in the video. But I still never got what I thought was like a really good tune. I got a better tune, and it's way better than any of the brushed copters I flew, like hands down on its worst day. But I never was able to get like I never able to get it flying like like a bigger copter, feeling just as smooth and effortless as a bigger copter. It always felt like I was compensating just a little bit for something about the copter, and I don't know what it might be. The throttle is also really sensitive. The difference between gaining altitude and losing altitude is pretty slim, uh, and that may just be because it has a it's very light, has a good thrust to weight ratio, and so you know it's just you don't need a lot of throttle to gain altitude. Now, that's good if you want to go fast, but it's not so good if you're trying to fly in a controlled manner. Another thing to say about this copter is that it does not come from the factory, at least mine didn't, set up for things like voltage monitoring or an OSD or current monitoring or any of that stuff. And in that respect, uh, it doesn't compare very favorably with, for example, the Furious FPV Mosquito. Uh, I have a Mosquito on my bench. I'm getting ready to do a review of it. It will be coming up in the future. Uh, but for now, what I'll say is that the Mosquito comes from the factory and it's got VBAP telemetry and it's got current monitoring. Uh, now, in the current monitoring, you could you could monitor on your Tyrannus if you wanted. You could do milliamp hours. You could really, <laughs> with these tiny little batteries that go on these guys, you really don't want to overtax them. With this one, you're flying off a timer or you're flying until it starts to feel mushy and then you land and you hope you haven't overtaxed the battery. Now, that's a small thing. Very few of the copters in this class come with those, you know, telemetry and current monitoring and so on. So it's really more to say that the Mosquito is exceptional in that it has it, 
rather than that say that the Hoverbot is, is exceptional, that it doesn't have it. Nevertheless, uh, if you're looking for something to buy in this price range and in this weight class, certainly the, the uh, Mosquito from Furious FPV is something you might also be looking at. And if telemetry and voltage monitoring and current monitoring are really, really important to you, maybe the Mosquito would be uh, something to look at. As far as image quality goes, well, you can see in the footage you've seen so far, the camera is more than acceptable. I felt like the color rendition was pretty good. Uh, when flying in low light, it got pretty sketchy. Didn't have spectacular low light performance. Uh, you could see in that sizzle reel video where I was flying around the playground, it was getting late in the day and the camera was definitely having problems facing into the sun. I think that's probably a lot to ask from a little uh, camera like this to, to handle all those challenging low light situations. Nevertheless, it's something to keep in mind as you're comparing it to other uh, copters on the market. Lastly, let me talk to you about my PIDs, and I'll go ahead and put my current PIDs on screen. I will tell you that I don't feel like these are absolutely perfect. I'm still working on them, but I do feel like I had a much, much better result trying to tune this copter than I ever did with any of the brushed copters that I tried to tune. Uh, I found that the copter was super twitchy, as I said, overcorrection, and, and pendulum-like response to, to sharp stick movements. Uh, one of the things I did to try to fix that was I tried raising the eye gain. I feel like on these very small, very light copters that raising the eye gain really stiffens them up and makes them feel like a bigger copter. On a big copter, you don't want it stiff, you want it loose, and you kind of want it as loose as you can get it. But on these little copters, they're already kind of so loose that stiffening them up actually helps. So I raised the eye gains by quite a bit. The other thing was that the copter felt a little, uh, well, you know, the overcorrection, you know, the overcorrection that I talked about, I thought maybe it was low P gain. If you think about how a copter flies when the P gain is low, you'll push and it'll kind of slosh around. And it wasn't exactly doing that, but I, I thought maybe it was low P gain. So I raised the P gains and I raised them quite a lot to the point where I think they were too high and then I backed them down again. And I found kind of a sweet spot. I feel like the copter with the PIDs I'm gonna show you, it, it's flying okay. I feel like it could be better with a little bit more refinement. I just haven't had time to get to it. But I'm super, super encouraged by the fact that I was even able to affect the tune in, in meaningful ways by playing with the gains. Whereas with some of the brushed copters, I would raise the P gain, I would raise the D gain, and it just would not get any better in any meaningful way. So I'm very happy with this one so far in, in that it, it, you even can begin to tune it and try to get the best flight characteristics out of it. Well, that's going to bring us to the end of this review of the Hoverbot Nano FPV kit. Uh, I'm happy to tell you that if you've watched this review and you're gung-ho to buy this copter right now, Hoverbot is running a $50 sale on this and I think other items on their store. I'm not sure. Go check it out. There's no coupon code or anything like that. You just go to their store and you'll see that the prices are marked down by 50 bucks. So I think this is normally around a $250 copter and you can get it now for around $200, which is, you know, that's, that's, I mean, what would you spend on a tiny whoop? This thing will spank a tiny whoop. I'll tell you what. Would I recommend that you buy this copter? Well, it's hard to say because I haven't flown a bunch of micro brushless copters and I will be flying. I've got the Mosquito coming up and a few others I'm hoping to see. And in the next weeks and months, maybe you'll see a roundup where I'll take all of them and I'll put them head to head and tell you which one I like the best. But for now, all I can do is review this one in a vacuum against itself. And I can tell you that it doesn't have any major defects that I found in my time bashing the crap out of it that would say, no, no, d d this, don't get this one. Uh, it, it, it's super durable. And all, I can't believe how much I smashed it into walls and crashed it. And the only thing I broke eventually was this. I can't believe it. So many of these micros, they just, you beat the heck out of them and they break and you're replacing parts left and right. It's fantastically durable. The flight characteristics, uh, a little twitchy with the default PIDs. The PIDs may be able to be improved, but, but overall, uh, especially compared to the brushed copters that we've been flying in the past, I think this is a pretty solid product. And if you're into brushed copters, I suspect that I think they're going to be a, a, a fad in a sense and that these brushless copters are just better. They fly better. They just fly better. I mean, they just do. And it used to be if you wanted to get down into the size class, you had to get a brushed motor, but not anymore. So, uh, so look forward to more and better brushless copters coming in the future. That's all for now. Hope this has been educational. Leave questions in the comments if you got any. Tell me what you think of this copter. Thanks for watching. Happy flying.